Good morning and welcome to Wei. We've been here already for four days and we've only seen one thing so far rain. and that is rain. Lots of it, it has been raining non-stop but today it's a beautiful shiny day. The sun is really out. Now it's a little bit cloudy but... We're going to explore the imperial past of Wei. Um, yeah. It's one of the most culturally significant cities in all of Vietnam. Today we're going to go to the Citadel, which is this baby right here behind us. And we're going to walk around the city a little bit, see what we can find. So let's go. Hue is the former capital of Vietnam. It was the capital in the 19th and early 20th century. And we're now on the southern gate where we're going to enter into the citadel and explore some of the beautiful temples and palaces they have here. It's a really famous place here in Vietnam and it's one of the most culturally important places here. So I'm really excited to be here and uh, have a look at all the beauty that it has to offer. We just crossed this bridge. This is the citadel. It looks a little bit like the main gate that you enter through when you get to the Forbidden City in Beijing. So this is like the Forbidden City of Hue, but I don't think it was forbidden. So it's just just a city. I mean, what do you want? We walked up to the entrance, but of course, first you have to buy a ticket. The ticket booth is really well hidden. I mean, we couldn't have spotted it, or no, right, it's right there. <laughs> we kind of missed it, so. It's over there. Oh, the fish loving. Whoa. Reverting to my earlier statement about the Forbidden City, turns out this is a little bit more similar to the one in Beijing than we initially thought, because according to the Lonely Planet, the Citadel has distinct sections. The Imperial Enclosure and the Forbidden Purple City form the epicenter of Vietnamese royal life. So there is a forbidden city here. The citadel was built in the beginning of the 19th century. The walls are 2 meters thick, 10 kilometers long, and there are 10 entrance gates. The moat that we saw outside is 30, 30 kilometers, 30 meters wide and 4 meters deep. That would be, that would be quite a feat, 30 kilometers. <laughs> We've been walking for days, we still haven't entered the citadel. The complex consists of a lot of different palaces and temples, but behind me is the main palace. It's the Noah Toa Palace. Every month the emperor would hold audiences here together with the male members of the royal family. And a lot of the important decisions were taken right here. In the middle, you'll find a beautifully decorated throne. Really, really impressive. The citadel was actually pretty badly damaged over the years, mainly in the Vietnam War. For example, this gate here in the garden where we are now, this gate behind me, you can see that the concrete and the paint have just been chipped away at. Apparently there have been some bombings of this area of the citadel and of the city of Hue during the Vietnam War in 1968. For example, there's also a temple here where you can only see the facade. The rest of the temple has basically been destroyed. It's interesting there though that you can still see the influence of China as well because there are some Chinese characters inscripted um, above the gate, above the main entrance of the temple. So that's pretty interesting to see. We saw it when we were in Mongolia already, we could see buildings and temples in a very distinctly Chinese style. You can still see that during that time there was a strong Chinese influence throughout the region. This is a real nice area here. It's the southwestern part of the complex and there's like a couple of temples here. This is you're making me dizzy, please stop. <laughs> <laughs> there are a few temples here. This is in front of me is the main temple. It's called the To Mu Temple. Uh, behind me is a temple. Even over there, there's a smaller temple. It's really nice. Oh. This urn dates from the early 19th century and it weighs over 2,630 kilograms. It's not that big, but I think it's made of bronze, no? Probably, yeah, it looks like it. It looks like it. And there's just one, there are actually nine here that I can see, and a smaller one over there. Even, so right, it's ten. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then there's a smaller one over there. Confirmed, I can count to nine plus one. Wow. It looks a little bit like this is a phone booth, like one of those English phone booths, <laughs> but there's actually a dragon inside of it. Yeah. 
funny thing, as she started saying that, I was starting the exact same sentence I was going to say. It looks a bit like a phone booth in the UK, like the old ones. Yeah. Oh my god, we're morphing into one person. Yeah, we've been spending too much time together. Maybe we should spend some time apart. It's really better for us. Yeah, yeah, you're right. More time apart. Like the Forbidden City in Beijing, this is also a palace complex. Obviously, it is much smaller in size than the one that you have in Beijing. And there are a few other differences. It's not in as good a state. It hasn't been fully restored. And it feels like, even though it's pretty big, the buildings are on a smaller scale, the gardens are smaller. But I like it a lot in terms of like the style and the atmosphere and just how beautiful these gardens yeah. are. So it's actually a lot more like you're going into someone's home here. It's not so much like you're in like an emperor's palace, but like you're in someone's home almost. Wow, this residence complex is even more impressive than previous one. Just look at this, there's even a moat around the, uh, yeah. around the building here. And then that's some the building. beautiful trees here. Small bridge over there. Small bridge, some very nice panels there with some beautiful carvings. And the entrance gate, wow. It must have been incredible to live here during that era. It's a beautiful complex. So much space. So much space. You have some temples over there, complex here. Everything is pretty much yours. So much money. Flapping those dongs around. Your face is even on the money. Oh yeah. If I would be an emperor, I'd put my face on the money too. That would be cool. Thank God hey. you're not. Look at that, a gate. This feels much more like it was an actual city with like proper streets, many bridges. I love this, it's really unexpected actually. So we've just ordered a Grab, which is essentially an Uber for scooters here in Vietnam. My guy is supposed to be Beep. right around the corner, so he should be here in a few minutes. And we're going to uh, go to one of the pagodas here, another like highlight here in Hue, to watch the sunset. So sort of a race against the clock, as usual. This is looking all too familiar. Your Grab taxi is here already and <laughs> mine is not. Bye bye, I love you. Good luck. The, the cow roadblock. Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. It's so funny. So many people had to like stop for it or slow it down, and those cows were just like walking across the road. And now at the famous Tien Mu Pagoda. There's many, many pagodas here in Way, but this is the most famous one, probably the most beautiful one as well. It's next to the per <laughs> Thank you. It's next to the Perfume River, which is right here. Some beautiful sunset views here. The Tianmu Pagoda, or the Pagoda of the Celestial Lady, was built in 1601, so it's more than 400 years old already. It consists of a pagoda, some small temples or, I don't know, things to use for praying. And on that side, you also have like a big temple. Oh, next to the temple complex, this is really beautiful palm, I would say, really nice, some waterfalls. Beautiful rocks. I really love, love this. This would be like perfect to sit in a chair, read a book, watch the world go by. Pretty Maybe nice. pray a bit, but I'm not very religious, so I'm not really into praying, but reading a book would be nice. I'm actually starting to get a little bit hungry. We haven't eaten really much today. We just had a very light breakfast. It's now 5 o'clock, 5.30, and uh, that's all we ate today, I must say. Kim's starting to look a little bit like a sandwich. What kind of sandwich? Ooh. Take wisely. <laughs> sandwich with some barbecue bacon. You call me a pig? <laughs> anyway, no, but it's really nice that we uh, get breakfast included in our hostel because we pay 160 dong per night for a private double room. 160,000. 
160,000, that's very important, yeah, because 100,000 dong is like 4 euros, like 4.5 dollars or something. So we pay basically 6.5 euros, about 7 dollars for a double private room with ensuite bathroom. It's on the third floor, but we'll forgive them for that. It has air conditioning, it's pretty clean, um, and breakfast is included. So what do you say, sandwich? <laughs> Time for some food? Let's <laughs> grab a grab and uh, head to this restaurant. Excellent plan. We've come to the Han restaurant, ours sells a beer. It's a local beer, the Huda beer. Costs just 60 cents here. Pretty affordable, I would say. And we ordered a set menu of five different dishes. Uh, the set menu only costs five euro per person, which is, I mean, it's incredibly cheap. 60 cents beer, five course menus for five euro. I really love this. Surprisingly, the guy who came to take up our order asked, yeah, where are you from? Said, yeah, we're from Belgium. So are you from the Flemish-speaking part or uh, the French-speaking part? Said, yeah, we're from the Flemish-speaking part. And then he started talking to us in fluent uh, Dutch. It's really incredible. Explain the full he explained menu. the full menu with all the ingredients to us in Dutch. Really, really nice. It's just so surprising because you don't expect like to walk in a re restaurant in Vietnam for a, for a guy to speak your language and be very good at it as well. The so first dish is Ban Beo. It's, it's not the whole dish. There's a couple of them. <laughs> It's a steamed rice cake filled with some savory fillings. And what you do is you add a spoon of fish sauce on top of it. And you make it loose like this. And then you just eat it in one go. Very crunchy. Oh, this is really good. I love this. Like the rice cake itself is like very soft. It doesn't have so much flavor. But then all those fillings and really crunchy things and the fish sauce gives like a really savory taste. Oh, oh it is good. It's very good. Neem je een wrap up here. Ook een beetje de een beetje sla daarin. So that was just a Dutch course in how to eat these spring rolls for dummies. He just came over and he was like, you know how to eat them? And I was like, well, you roll them. And he was like, no, no, I will show you. So he just did it for me. So what is in here? We have some minced pork that has been barbecued on like a lemongrass stick. So this stick is made of lemongrass. That's how they prepare it. That's how they barbecue it. Instead of on a wooden stick, they just put it on a piece of lemongrass and then they put it on a barbecue. It looks good. Okay, then we have another big plate here that has something all that is apparently figs. We have some carrots here. And we also have a big just pile of greens. And that's essentially how you make your spring roll. That's your make your spring roll kit. And then there's this. This is the peanut butter sauce that uh, the region around Wei is famous for. I love peanut butter, so it's a perfect dish for me basically. That meat is very lemongrassy. You can really taste the lemongrass in there. It's so funny. And the sauce is really, really good. I like this. Really nice. So far, this menu has been working out. Next dish. This is a fried rice base with some topping on it. You could call it some kind of Vietnamese pizza. Uh, there's some sausage on it, some shrimp, even some vegetables, a little bit of sauce. You have to cut it up a bit in smaller pieces. Put it in your small little bowl, add some uh, peanut sauce, add some vegetables, mix it a bit up together and then eat it like that. Cheers. Oh that greasy, crunchy, fried texture together with uh, peanut sauce and then have some thinly sliced uh, vegetables. Really love this, good. Mm. This is Ban Ko Tetong, which is essentially a type of spring roll as well, um, in some rice paper. Only this is much more like pasta-like in texture. You can also see it, I mean, it looks a little bit more like pasta. Uh, and on the inside is pork. So we're going to, I was gonna say dump it, but let's not dump it, let's just dip it here in this uh, sweet fish sauce. It's good, there's some fresh herbs in there as well. I see some sesame seeds and some garlic. Pretty nice. Last but not least, some fried spring rolls, also called nem. Uh, I think they're vegetable filled. I like the crunchiness on the outside, fluffy on the inside, bit sweet, bit spicy, a little bit of garlic in the sauce as well. And that is the fifth and final course of our menu. So that concludes our tour of Ue. We had a really good time. Next stop is going to be Hoi An, a little bit further south. It is supposed to be one of the cities with the best vibe in all 
of Vietnam. So we're super excited to go there. So if you like this video, please leave a like and make sure to hit the subscribe button. Don't hit it too hard, don't hurt yourself. Um, hit the subscribe button if you want to follow the rest of our journey. We are going to do the rest of Vietnam further south and then we're gonna do Thailand. So if you want to be part of that, make sure to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Good night, bye bye.